ICMA is shining a light on the unique story of a pair of first-generation immigrant siblings who are keeping the American dream alive and well through their journey to public service. Joining us for our first tandem member spotlight is Aram and Armine Chaparian, California's first known brother-sister city manager duo. Thank you both. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us and to give the audience a better understanding of your background. Can we? Can you each describe a challenge you faced in your career and how you were able to overcome it? I guess I'll start. First and foremost, thank you to ICMA for this great opportunity. And um, I did want to think about what is that challenge that I've under uh, that I've gone through. And I think the the biggest challenge I can think of is um, being able to relate to others in our industry when I was coming up who looked like me, sounded like me, had a similar journey as I did. And unfortunately, there weren't too many faces that resembled um, a first generation immigrant entering the public sector and going on this journey to become a city manager. I would say that has been one of my greatest challenges. The good news, though, is I feel that in the last 20 years, our industry has really changed um, the way we function. And more than ever, there are people who I'd like to think the new generation can relate to. Um, who come from different backgrounds, and that diversity has really helped shape the path for the new folks entering our industry. I'll add on to Arvina's uh, discussion. Again, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I think finding the my niche uh, in a very broad industry, uh, number one, being uh, attracted to public service as as an uh, immigrant. Uh, when I came here, I was 11 years old. Arvina was nine. We both didn't speak any English. We're products of the, the local Pasadena Unified School District of the English as a Second Language program. So having that foundational compassion for public service and then trying to find that right uh, calling within our industry because it's so broad. Uh, I came through as a generalist and then I uh, was introduced to employee relations and labor relations. And I was able to pivot that opportunity into expanding my uh, the depth within the public sector, but the consistency throughout uh, my experience has been the willingness to serve, to mentor, to, to really deliver essential public services, which has been, especially the last uh, two years, uh, a true calling coming full circle and realizing that there's a reason why we're in this place and watching Armina and I at Solar Parallel, our careers has been truly inspiring and an opportunity for us to really work on each other's strengths. To expound on that a little bit, what has been the highlight of each of your careers thus far? I think for me, um, the highlight has been having the opportunity to touch so many different operations. Um, I consider myself very fortunate. Um, 21 years in local government, I've had the opportunity to work for five very different communities, ranging in size, ranging in the level of service, um, ranging from full service to contract cities. And looking back at all of those experiences, um, the work has always been there. Definitely the grind has been there. I started my path on the redevelopment, community development uh, career trajectory. So I've touched every element of development. The projects have been phenomenal. But if I was to tell you what the greatest highlight has been, I think it has truly been the ability to create a profession that I'm very proud of and now being able to help develop the next generation and being able to pay it forward. And I think that's something I truly take pride in. And as a city manager, it's something that I fundamentally want to instill in the organization I'm working in and the next level of talent that we're attracting to our industry. Because I think the work is getting more and more challenging in our sector. The expectations are getting higher and higher, both expectations from council, the community. But I think if we're able to cultivate a great next generation who sees the potential of how great it is to do the work that we do and the level of professionalism we bring to it, I think that's definitely a career highlight for me. Reflecting on my also 21-year career, one of the major highlights is the establishment of a management assistant program. Um, I started as an intern, what was meant to be a six-month internship at the city of Torrance, where I've been employed the last uh, 21 years. And while I was an intern, I had the opportunity to grow and, and promote within the agency However, we did not have a holdover position for individuals like me who had just finished grad school, starting a family, wanting to stay in local government. And throughout the years, I always made sure to be an advocate for continual professional development attraction of young talent into our industry. And this last year, the support of our council 
we're able to start a management uh, assistant program, which is sort of a, like a fellowship where individuals to complete successfully our management aid program, which is our initial entry internship program, will be able to rotate within the city departments for two years. And that'll give them a, a, an opportunity to hopefully compete and obtain full-time employment uh, in our sector. So I think that's for all the contract negotiations, the budgets, the pandemic, uh, the councils, the department heads, the staff that have come and gone, I think the start establishing a management system program will really help carry the legacy of service, which I'm very proud of here at the city of Torrance. How do you maintain a good work-life balance in a role as all-encompassing as a city manager, and especially with an immediate family member that shares that same role? So we're both happily married. We both have three children. Um, my three range between the ages of 13 and six, and our six-year-olds, as we speak, are in the same summer camp together. So um, our kids see each other, my 13-year-old and Adam's uh, soon-to-be, uh, or his 15-year-old, um, they'll be in high school together next year. So we do have our family is very tight knit. Um, I think definitely um, the work life balance question we get quite a bit as um, a female in the industry, as a working mom, uh, it's definitely challenging. And um, I, you know, when I get asked this question, I always say there really is no balance because um, both are priority. And I think what helps is working in a community and working for a council who's supportive of that, um, trying to instill the kind of morale in the organization I work in where mind, being mindful of the times we're living in, being mindful of those responsibilities we have outside of work. Uh, my children and my husband are, are a priority. It also is a way where I, um, I, I know Aram does this too, my kids come out to city events. Um, I think between the six of our kids, they probably know more about local government and how things work than most kids in their classrooms. So they definitely bring a different perspective in their social science classes. But finding ways to incorporate my family in the work that I do, having a supportive spouse. Now, when it comes to that crossover, when Aram and I are at a fa family function together, first and foremost, I think we are so respectful of each other as siblings, um, as friends, and definitely having that role, respecting each other's role, um, but it's phenomenal having a sounding board. And I think knowing that um, if I have, uh, you know, if I have that network that I'm looking for, I have that network in my family. Um, and, you know, having that honesty and that vulnerability that comes with it is priceless. Um, but sometimes there is no balance. I hate to admit it. There are times where, you know, I'm going to have a really late council night tomorrow night. So I probably won't get home until very, very late. So knowing that, um, you know, my children understand that, my spouse understands that, my family unit as a whole, the village around me understands that. I'll just, just a few thoughts. Uh, as much as you can explain what a city manager does to someone, it, it's not the same as a lived experience. So I think uh, Army and I understanding what, what is it that our jobs entail uh, adds another layer to, to, to this conversation. And the work-life balance, it's, also incumbent on us being in the positions we're in to lead by example. And I, I make sure to take time off when, you know, reasonable, obviously, and I have a great team that I, that I can rely on. Uh, we be behind every one of us. There's a partner, a spouse, a child, a parent that's reliant outside of work for that nourish, nourishment support, you know, both on the development and growth and, and family fun and trips. So, I, I really uh, embrace that role as, as a parent, and I make sure that I, I make it a point to share with my team that they, they too should utilize their time off. And nowadays we're embracing work from home concepts and telecommuting and flex work schedule uh, because the work is so part of our you know fabric, especially in the leadership roles that we're in, you really have to proactively carve out time uh, to spend with family, but even in, in, those, in those context of family gatherings, there's always a chance where even it's just how are things going, um, that we do the check-ins and, and if we need to, you know, have a sidebar, we will, but most of the times it's having situational awareness and know that there's a sounding board, um, and, you know, having a sibling layer adds a whole different, uh, 
that dimension, which I, I really enjoy. To hear more from Aram and Armine, we encourage you to view their feature pieces in the California City Management Foundation, the South Pasadena Review, and Weekends and Torrents on YouTube. You can find those linked in our description, and to view more member spotlights, subscribe to our channel.